Are you looking for a way to maybe bring in a second device into your online presentation? You are using a streaming software like Ecamm Live or OBS, and you know that there's an option, but you're kind of confused. And that is called NDI. It is the type of thing people will throw around and say, oh, just use NDI. And you might think, okay, what is it? How does it work? How do I do it? So today I'm going to focus on NDI for a beginner user who's trying to look to use it with their streaming software. And today I'll talk about Ecamm and OBS. Now this is going to be an overview and it is intended for beginners. So if you are already comfortable with NDI, this is probably not for you, but if you are someone who wants to get started and learn about it, that is what my intention is today. So I'm going to show you why you might use it, how to actually set it up and get it started. And I've got this set up today, ready to show you this demonstration. And if we have never met before, my name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. Okay, so we are talking NDI. And I have to say that when I first learned about this, someone would say, oh, well, it stands for Network Device Interface. That still didn't tell me anything. And if you go on some of the websites and you read the description, it still doesn't really tell you anything. So I'm going to share my interpretation of NDI and how I use it in my online virtual presentations. So what we first want to know is, okay, what is it and what is it doing exactly? So it does stand for network device interface. And the way I describe it is it's a way to bring either applications or maybe even a full screen share into your streaming software. So if you're using something like Ecamm Live or OBS and bringing those into a Zoom presentation or doing something like I'm doing now where I'm recording this presentation I've put together and I wanna be able to bring in an application or bring in another computer or device and show that as a camera source. And if you're still not clear, I'll show you some actual examples and then we will understand what we're saying. Now, why would we use it? Because there are a few different reasons you might wanna use this technology. The first, and this is why I mostly use it, is you might want to bring in a secondary device. For example, I like to put my slide presentation on a separate device, usually a laptop. Occasionally, I'll use a tablet. And there are different reasons why you might want those. We won't get into that. But one of the beautiful things about using a secondary device is that it offloads some of the demands from your main computer. Because if you're using a streaming software and maybe Zoom and putting something out there, that's a lot of demand on your computer. So by sharing that, you can put it on another device and so you don't have to worry about your main computer possibly overheating, the fan kicking in, or slowing down or lagging. So that's my main reason for using NDI. Now the other thing is maybe you are an Ecamm user and you wanna share part of your screen. And when you use screen sharing in Ecamm, it's a little bit more of a demand on your computer. So when you use NDI, it's just like bringing in a camera source. So it's not taking up as much. And I have an example of that in my presentation today that you will see where I am using NDI to bring in a browser so you can see it where I'm not actually sharing my screen. And the other thing is there are certain applications that you might have on your computer that you can actually bring into your production like Adobe. For example, a really fun one is that there's an Adobe character animator where you can bring that in and it uses NDI technology. So it will bring in this animated face over your own face. It's really fun. Maybe I'll do another video about it. But that all that is to say there are certain applications that use NDI as their technology. Now here is an example of where I use NDI also for my training. So here, this is actually my Dell laptop. And right now I'm using NDI to bring my display into this production. So my main computer is actually an iMac, but this is Windows. So I can actually do things. So right now I've got OBS showing on this Windows computer, but I can actually bring it in. It's like a camera source into this production. But the other thing I can do is actually add it in and adjust it so I can fit it in a frame. So right here, maybe I want to show my face in this picture in picture style overlay and show my computer. Well, I can also do that. So it makes it easy to share. 
Now, if you're curious about the setup, I actually do have an overhead shot. So this is what you are seeing right now, or this is what I'm seeing and I'm showing it to you. So I have my primary computer, which is my iMac. And here's my teleprompter and my second monitor. Down here, I've got my Stream Deck and I've got my iPad, which you will see, I'm right now I'm running an NDI software on this, which I will show you an example of later. And then here is my laptop. So this is my Dell and I'm running OBS, which you can then see when I bring it into my production. So if I go back in my production to this picture, now I'm showing that to you. So all this to say is that you can connect your different devices. They're over your network. So they're working on the same network and that's how they're all communicating with each other. And so these are some of the reasons that you might want to use that. Now, when it comes to on the same computer, so you just saw an example of me bringing in from my, my Dell <laughs> onto this. Well, I can also bring things in the same computer. So on my iMac, you can see here that I have this browser open. Well, what I can do is actually have this overlay here where I am actually pulling in this browser into my Ecamm production. And that way I can show you a demonstration of how you can download the NDI tools. And the great thing about this is I'm able to just resize this and fit it exactly into the window so that I have it all set up. So that's just another example of why you might wanna use NDI. So I'm using it as a camera source instead of actually sharing my screen. Now, before I get into the how-to, I do wanna say there are some considerations. So the first is that when I am using NDI to bring in a slideshow or presentation, sometimes I find there is a slight lag. I think it's around one second, which I know for us these days, that feels like an eternity. But knowing that, I just make sure that I am progressing the slide at a pace that I know will work. And when you're talking, a one second delay is really not the worst thing in the world. Now, I do try to have my devices hardwired. So I have this laptop right now connected into the internet by cable, as do I with my, uh, my main computer. And so they're all connected using an ethernet switch. I'm not going to get too much into that. I talk about that a little bit in my video on how to bring in slides from a second device. So if you haven't seen that, you can go and check that out. The other is that there are times when I've tried to make an app show up, sort of like I've got that browser showing up and it doesn't always work. So sometimes when I look at the list of available apps, I can't see them all. And that can be frustrating, but that is a limitation. Now, the software I'm using right now is all free, so you just have to take it or leave it. The other thing is that it's running another software program. So it does add a little bit to the load on your computer. So if I'm running my streaming software and I'm running say Zoom and I've got a browser open and I'm running my scan converter, which is one of the NDI apps that I'm using right now for this browser, it's adding a little bit more. So you have to be careful and test how your computer holds up when you're running multiple programs. And then the other piece is that you saw an example of my iPad. I'm using that wirelessly over my internet. So that is something where you always have a risk of losing your connection if you are not hardwired. So that is something to always be aware of. Also, you can connect wirelessly. So if you have your main computer and a secondary device on the same network wirelessly, they will still connect using NDI technology. All right, so let's get into the how to. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you download the NDI tools. So I have a link in the description, but you're going to the new tech site. And that is the site that I have up right now. Now there are paid alternatives, but for today, this is for beginners, just go to this site. So it's ndi.tv slash tools, and you will see that on the browser here. So this is the main page. And if you just scroll a little bit, you'll see NDI tools available. Click download and it will bring you to the bottom of the page. And on this page, you will see the different options. So there's Windows, Mac, and then there's one called NDI analysis. Skip that, you're a beginner, don't even worry about it. So pick the one for you, they are free, but you do have to enter your email and they will email you the download link for these. With Windows, they're all together in one download. For Mac, the, the tools are together, but the driver is separate. 
download both, you wanna make sure that you install the driver. So you will grab these tools and make sure that you are downloading them all, but you're not going to install all of them. So I would say for right now, you want to focus on the access manager and the scan converter for Mac, screen capture for Windows. I don't know why they have separate names, but they do. The other thing I wanna show you is if you are using OBS, you want to make sure that you are downloading the plugin. So the only way you're going to see an NDI source in OBS is if you have the OBS NDI plugin. So I have the link in the description. You wanna to go to this page. It will always have the most up-to-date plugins and find the one for you. So there's the Mac and Windows. So you can pick which one and download that to your computer. And the way you know you have it properly installed, the plugin. So here you can see I have my OBS. Under sources, when you click add a new source, you should see NDI source in the list. Make sure that the first time that you install it, you close OBS and then you reopen it again. And that way you will make sure that you have the OBS plugin for NDI. Now, one of the things I'll say is if you're using OBS and you want to just share, for example, the browser, you already have the benefit in OBS of the window capture. So really for OBS, the reasons I would use NDI as an option is when you're bringing in another device. And I'll show you an example of how my laptop right now is actually bringing in a source. I can actually pull up that same browser on this laptop that I have open on my primary computer. So once you've downloaded those and installed those, then it's time to launch the tools you need. And if you are bringing in a secondary device, the first thing you want to do is bring in the access manager. So the access manager, you'll run that program, and this is where you can add an IP address for the other devices on your network. Now this is for computers. So what you will do is, I've got this picture here where I've blocked out my IP address, but you can go to your other device, look up your IP address, so go in your network device settings, and then you will add that in there and click OK. And that will add your other devices. So now they know that they will be able to access each other properly. So that is the next step there. When it comes to the secondary device, so the thing you want, so for example, with my laptop right now, I am running the screen capture, which is for Windows, that is showing my entire display and sending that to my main device. If you are using a Mac, let's say you have a Mac laptop, which I also have, then you would be running the scan converter and you decide, are you going to show the entire desktop or are you just going to show one application? Now for how you actually do that, you, I'm gonna share my screen for a second. So if I go into live demo mode right now, uh, we're gonna cancel that. So for live demo mode, I'm recording this video and I can go in, if we go down to the bar here, I've got scan converter. And if I click on that, now at the top, you will see new tech NDI scan converter. I click file. And right now I have the browser showing. That is what I have chosen. But you could choose the other programs that are currently running and open on your computer. Okay, so I'm gonna close live demo mode. Now let's talk about mobile. So you can also use NDI technology with mobile devices. Now, if we take a look, the one I'm going to share with you today is called NDI HX Capture. And this is from NewTek who make the tools. So if we go back to the website, you can see that at the moment they only have iOS. So you could go into iTunes and download this NDI HX Capture. Now, what I wanna say about it is that this one is not free. The other tools that you can download before, those are free tools. This one is paid. If you think that you are going to be using this technology, then it's definitely a worthwhile investment and you can use it across different devices. So I currently have NDI HX Capture on my phone and on my iPad. So let's actually jump into an example. So this is what the app looks like. So I am now broadcasting. That's how I'm bringing this into the presentation right now. And so once you are broadcasting, you can actually just close the app and open the one that you want. So I want to open 
keynote. Now I would like to actually move it to landscape mode. There we go. So now we have this in landscape and I press play. And now we have this, this one slide, this is a presentation. So this is showing from my iPad onto Ecamm on my main camera and I'm using the NDI technology. So I don't have a cable. So right now I am not connected, which is an option. You do not have to spend money on the NDI app, app if you do have a way of just being wired and having a cable attach your iPad. But sometimes it's nice to have this option and I have it on both my phone and my tablet. Here's the other benefit. Let's say you are actually a Windows user who happens to have an iPad. Well, you can actually use them together. So if we go back to the Windows and we take a look at OBS, well, what I can do is actually see this source. So that's my computer source, but let's take a look at the iPad. So right now, because I'm all on the same network, I am able to on this Windows laptop to pull in from my iPad as well. And so in this way, you can see the slides can be transferred over and they do not have to be on the same Apple ecosystem. So that is a real benefit. Now let's go back to this just for a second because I do wanna show you that when I went to this NDI, you can actually see the browser that I was sharing from before because they're all on the same network. So anything right now that is being projected using NDI is going to show up all on that same network. So that's the mobile app. You wanna make sure that you are broadcasting and then switch to the app that you wanna show, or it could be a case that maybe you wanna do a demonstration with your phone or with your iPad, then you can actually just navigate on your device and show it in your production. All right. Now we are going to move to the final step, which is arranging the camera. So we have everything set up, we've downloaded, we've installed everything, and we've now opened up these programs and selected what we want them to show. So in this case, right now, I have a browser that is being shown and I have my iPad that are being shown. So now we wanna make sure that we are arranging and placing that where we want it. So let's go into demo mode and I will show you Ecamm first and then we will go to OBS. So right now, this is my Ecamm production. I'm getting a little warning there. And what we wanna do is maybe I'm going to take this picture in picture, but instead of showing the browser, I actually want to change the camera. So if I click, because this, this right here is actually a camera overlay and I've got it placed in this overlay window. If I click on the little pencil, I can actually choose which camera I want to show up. And remember, NDI is showing a camera. So I want to say, I want my iPad. So now all of a sudden I have changed that and I now have my iPad instead of showing the browser. But when we take a look at this, you can see that I'm basically choosing between my different cameras. This is my main camera. This is the browser, which is on my local computer, my main computer using scan converter. We've got my iPad, which is using the NDI HX capture. And then we also have my Dell, which is showing up. And then we have the webcam, which is my overhead shot. So you can see that that's how it works. But let's say we want just the thing to be fully NDI. Well here, instead of picking my main camera, I would just pick my iPad. But let's say I wanna change this actually to a different camera. So I could choose to switch this to being showing my laptop display. So really what's happening is I am able to pick all, you can see all three of these, it might be a little small. This is the browser using scan converter. This is my iPad showing Keynote. And then this is my laptop showing OBS on a Windows device. And really that's what you wanna do is pick the camera if you're just showing the whole thing. But if you are doing a picture in picture browser like this, this is where you have a camera overlay. So to add a camera overlay, you go into overlays and you click on the little camera and you can add a camera overlay. So this right now is my main camera, but here I would say I want to change this from my main camera to whichever device I wanna show. So here, this is on the same device. So because I'm on my iMac, Ecamm is on my iMac and I can drag this to the size that I want and then position that where I want. And so this is how you would arrange your picture. Now, right now, 
This is over top of my overlay. So you always want to make sure that your overlay is on top of everything. And now that browser is just tucked behind that overlay. And that's how you arrange it in Ecamm. So I'm going to turn off live demo mode. And now let's go over to the Dell. So here is an example where I have my NDI source, which is the browser. And so really I would just want to arrange this however I want. You can move it to the screen. If you wanted to have it in the picture in picture, I could add an NDI source. And here I actually have two that are already set up. One, this is the browser. So if I wanted to add the browser and kind of recreate what I just showed you, I wanna make sure that I kind of drag it over and then resize it appropriately. And it's not a perfect fit, but I would just kind of, so this one's gonna be a little bit over the edge, which is okay. And then you always wanna make sure that your overlay is at the top. So now it's tucked behind. But let's say you want to show your slides, you could either have it show the entire thing, or if I wanted this picture in picture, instead of this NDI source, I would instead add the second NDI source, and that would be going in here. I would go to add existing and add the NDI source. If you were doing a new one, you would say create new, you would call it whatever you wanna call it. We'll leave this source to, say okay. And then all of the available NDI sources that you can have, which right now we have my iPad and then it says the Intel, but we could select the iPad here and that's how you add your NDI source. All of the NDI sources that are currently projecting should be the ones that are available. So that is an overview of how you can download, set up, and then arrange your NDI sources just like any other camera. And so that gives you the freedom to arrange them in a certain way, resize them really easily, and it's also a way for you to affordably have more than one device connect with each other. And you can connect across different ecosystems as you have seen here, because I am showing a Windows computer on my Mac and I'm able to bring in my tablet, which is an iPad into my PC. So there are a lot of possibilities and a lot of great reasons that you would wanna use this. So hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments, how's your experience? Did you try it? Did it work? Do you have any more questions? Hopefully you have the best of luck and you can make some more professional and engaging online presentations.